To do these three exercises, all you need is your body, the floor, and a roller. <laughs> now I have a, a really a long and hard, firm roller. You can use, if you don't have one of these at home, you can take a towel, like a big beach towel, and roll it up. It doesn't have to be this big or this long. But as long as it's somewhat firm and supportive. And also a tennis ball. These come in very handy. All right. So I'll show you three exercises that really, really helps reduce pain in my upper back, shoulder, and neck area. <clears throat> to begin, come onto your back, lying down. If that's hard for you to lie down because uh, you have severe neck pain, one way that you can get down is by sliding. So you kind of get on your side and you slide your arm slowly, slowly until you're all the way down. Then you roll onto your back. Once you're on your back, bend your knees and bring your feet to the floor. Rest your arms down along the side. You can take a few deep breaths in and out. And just notice how you breathe in this pose. And notice how your hips, back, and head rest on the floor. So what I mean when I say notice how they rest on the floor, Begin by taking your attention to your hips. Notice, does one hip rest heavier into the ground? Or is the weight equally distributed on the sacrum? It doesn't need to be any certain way. We just want to observe and notice. You breathe deep and slow. And take your attention to your low back and notice how there's space between your low back and the floor. <clears throat> Acknowledge the space as you breathe in and out and relax and smooth, focused breath. Now take your attention to your upper back and shoulders and notice does one side of your upper back or does one shoulder rest heavier in the ground than the other? <clears throat> you can also notice does one rest higher? Is one kind of elevated a little bit higher closer to your ear or, or down lower? But just notice how do your shoulder blades and your upper back and shoulders rest on the ground? As you breathe in and out, take your attention now to the back of your neck and notice the space between the back of your neck and the floor. Acknowledge the space as you breathe in and out. Now bring your attention to your head and notice how your head is resting on the ground. <clears throat> Now, once you sense how your body rests in this position, take your hands behind your head and interlace your fingers. Let your head rest completely into your hands, softening any tension in your neck, jaw, face. And we'll create a movement. So as you breathe in, fill the space of your belly. Allow the breath to expand your ribs and your abdomen. And then as you exhale through the nose, press your low back to the ground and draw your pubic bone up as though you wanted to bring your pubic bone to your navel center. Very gentle, subtle, that tilting of the pelvis. Then on an inhale, Release the low back and feel the space between your low back and the floor. You can 
gently accentuate the space between the low back and the floor by tilting the hips forward. And then exhale, slowly press the hips back, press the low back down, and pull up and in on the pelvic floor muscles. Inhale, release, let the low back come up, and gently press the hips forward, creating an arching of the spine, and on the exhalation, a gentle flattening and rounding. Now the key here is to notice where is there jerkiness in the movement? Where is there jerkiness in the breath? And see if you can become really aware and move a little slower to make the movement one continuous smooth flow of inhalation, swaying the back, arching it, and exhalation, rounding the spine, pressing the low back down and pulling the pelvic floor up. Then on your next inhalation, come to a neutral spine. Now we'll do the upper body, the upper spine. So on an inhalation, strongly arch the spine up, the low back. And as you do, squeeze your shoulder blades together Press your elbows down into the ground and press the back of your head into your hands. On an exhalation, slowly release the low back, bring the elbows up, and not using any neck strength, but only arm strength, gently lift the head. Inhale, release down, elbows come down, shoulder blades squeeze, press the elbows down, press the head back and down and lift the low back. Exhale, release the low back, elbows up, draw the head up using arm strength or strength, not neck strength. And then inhale, release down. Press the elbows down, squeeze the shoulder blades, press the back of your head down. Exhale, release. Elbows up. Low back presses, lift the head, and then release down on an inhale. Come to a neutral spine. So again, one of the main qualities here is slowness and mindfulness with the breath, smoothness with the movement. So maybe you need to move a little slower so that there's not jerkiness or places where your body kind of skips over that area, right? That there's this jerkiness. You want really nice, smooth movement. And now we'll link both of these movements together, the hips and the upper back. So on an inhalation, sway the back strongly, press the elbows down, press the shoulder blades together, press the back of the head into the hands. Exhale, round the spine, elbows up, Press the low back down, pull the pubic bone up, pull the pelvic floor up. And inhale, release. Sway the back strongly, tilt the hips forward. Elbows press, shoulder blades squeeze, back of the head presses. And exhale, slowly reverse. Elbows up, press the low back down. Pull up and in on pelvic floor. Engage your core muscles. And then inhale to release. Keep doing this a few times. What's important as you inhale and gently press, as you exhale and engage the core, engage the pelvic floor, we want to do this with no tension in the face, with no gritting or force or pressure, but more of an engagement, an awakening of these muscles to reset. And then the next time, you exhale, inhale and release. Bring your arms down by your side. And just notice the sensations in your spine and in your core. Now we'll slowly roll to your side. Extend the arm up. And then use your opposite arm to press your body up 
keeping your neck nice and relaxed. So the next exercise, grab your rolled up blanket or your bolster, roller, right here. I'm gonna make it long ways and you're gonna lay on this bolster on your spine. So go ahead and sit on it. And again, if it's challenging on your neck to lay straight back, you can use your arms to help support that. So you can take one hand to the back of your head and one hand behind you to support your neck as you lower down. Now, at where you want your head is you have your skull, your cranium right here. There's the edge of that, the bone, is called your occipital ridge. You want the base of that right on the edge so that your head is not hanging off and but like and tilted way back, but it's slightly on the edge and just enough where you can create some traction. So right now I'm gently pulling down, creating space and length in the back of my neck by hooking the occipital ridge of my skull on the edge of this roller. And then bring your arms down. Now it's up to you. I find more support when my knees are bent, my feet are on the floor because then I'm not rolling around. But some people, like my husband, he likes to do this with his legs extended. So that's up to you. Whatever feels more stable, whatever feels better on your own body. I'm gonna bend my knees for more support. Now, oftentimes when we're dealing with shoulder and neck pain, there's a lot of tension in the front side and tension also around the shoulder girdle as you're lifting and raising your arms above your head. So this practice, first, you take your hands and you slowly inhale, sweeping your arms up and over your head. You want to connect the length of your movement to the length of your breath so that when your inhale ends is the moment your arms reach over your head. And then exhale, bring your arms down. Connect the length of your movement to the length of your breath so that they're one single unit. One movement of inhalation as the arms come up. and exhalation as the arms go down. Do one more, inhaling, bringing your arms up. Reach and extend, and then slowly press the lower ribs down into the bolster. So you're lengthening your low back, but you're not focused on pressing your low back down. Focus more on the, the lower middle back. So right where the bottom of your ribs are, focus on pressing that down for just a moment. As you extend your arms up and over your head, reaching with your fingertips. Notice if you create any tension in your jaw or neck from doing this and try to soften wherever you can and still be engaged so that you're engaged without tension. Notice if there's any places of pain or tension or tightness or just sensation and breathe into that. With your arms extended up over your head actively, make your hands relax. So the arms are active, but the hands are relaxed. And keep the breath flowing in and out. Slowly, you'll begin to extend your arms out like a V, little by little. And right to that point where you're like, oh, I feel that. And then see if you can soften. So now instead of your arms being active, let your arms be relaxed. So your elbows will slightly bend, your hands relax, shoulders relax. And notice your breath. Notice the sensation in your shoulders, in your elbows. 
And then slowly, after you hold for a few breaths, bring your arms out a little wider. Relax. We'll let gravity do most of the work. We place our body in a position and just soften. Soften our effort, soften the tension, and let our breath flow. Inhale. And slowly, gradually, bring your arms out a little wider. And everybody will feel this in slightly different places. So you want to take your arms to wherever you feel that internal message that says right here pause here breathe and then slowly slowly begin to let your arms go down by your side rest here with your arms down by your side for a moment as you breathe in and out and relax right The next exercise with this prop is bringing the arms up overhead. So inhale, reach the arms up, all the way up and back. And then you hold here. Now I will say there's been times when my shoulder will not let me, it'll only go so far. And then it's like, I. I lose all power. So sometimes I use my opposite hand to help support my right arm in going down. Like this, I hold it. Now another thing that you might find is that if it's hard to reach your arms up and over your head from your shoulder, play around with the rotation of your wrists. So on your hand, you can play around with bringing your hands facing each other with your palms facing up. And you'll find that the rotation of your wrist has a huge effect on what's going on in your shoulder when you're raising your arms up and over your head, whether you're laying down or standing up. So you can always play with the rotation of your wrist because that changes how the ball and socket are moving in relationship to your shoulder as you move your arm up and down, okay? The way you turn has a big effect. So find which way you can bring your arms up and over your head. Once they are there, then we do some resistance exercises. So, it doesn't matter which side you start with. Just bring, let's just say, we'll start with our left hand on top of the right. So left hand on top of the right, palm, both palms face up. We're gonna gently press down with your left hand and press up with your right arm. Try to keep your face relaxed, your jaw relaxed, and then release. So just gentle. Tension release exercise, relax completely. Then again, engage, pressing down with your left hand, up with your right hand. Breathing. And then release. We'll just do one more on this side. Softening in between each one. And releasing all effort helps to reestablish a new baseline. And that's why we take a lot of breaks and a lot of resting periods. Because we're not trying to muscle through something. What we're trying to do is create a new way our body engages. And create a new baseline. And that requires integration time. So we engage, left hand down, right hand up, breathe, hold. 
soften any effort where it's not needed. Like, you don't need to clench your jaw to do this. You don't need to scrunch your eyebrows to do this. You don't need to clench your butt to do this. Fine. What you might be unnecessarily tensing and release it, and then also now release your arms. Resting breaths are the integration period to help your body establish a new baseline, a new sense of normal, a new way to engage the muscles. And slowly circle sweep the arms down. Rest here. Deep breath in now. And then we'll do the other side. So reach your arms up and overhead. Again, turn your wrists in whatever way you need to get your arms up and over in a comfortable way. And then we'll do right hand on top of left. So keeping the breath flowing, you're gonna press the right hand down and the left arm up. Breathing nice and gentle, keeping your neck relaxed, your face relaxed, and any other part of your body that's not needed Free of tension. Then release the arms, the shoulders, breathe. Integrate. And again, right hand on top of left. Press the right arm down, left arm up, breathe and hold. Allow the body to integrate through relaxation and through breathing. Last time. Right arm down, left arm up, pressing, breathing. Softening every other part of the body that's not needed right now to hold your thumbs. And then completely relax your arms. Relax your breath. Slowly circle sweep the arms down by your side and take a few resting breaths here. off of the, the bolster, depending on your capabilities, you can roll off to the side a little bit, like this. Or you can sit up, I find that more challenging for my neck, so I like to roll off to the side. And hug my knees in, flex the feet, just to get a little bit of a, a contrast. Counter pose. And then from here, grab your tennis ball. Notice how you feel sitting up. And then what we want to do with the tennis ball is if you know that you have some trigger points, for example, if you tuck your chin and you're like, wow, there's this point in my back that I really feel, or whenever you do this certain movement, you're like, oh, this point is the point that really hurts. This is really helpful. So I have one of those points. My point is right behind my right shoulder blade right about here. So I take the small and I lay on it. And you want to find wherever it is on your body, there's this like these strong points, trigger points is what they're called. And what you do is you just take the tennis ball and you lay right on it. You lay and breathe. 
And depending on how sensitive it is, you can either kind of push down into it. You can roll a little bit. You can make movements with your arms to get in a little bit deeper it's underneath the shoulder blade. But the key is to breathe. And the key is to relax, to soften. And so let gravity do its job, which is to hold you and to support you. Breathing in and out. And you can hold this for as long as you feel comfortable. Sometimes, you know, if the family is watching a movie, I, I, I'll lay on the ground and just roll out. I use my roller, I use the tennis balls, and I breathe so that I can still participate with the family, but I'm also taking care of my own body. Another thing that I like to do when I'm utilizing the tennis ball underneath my shoulder blade, if I want it a little bit deeper, what I do is I take my arms out and then whatever side I have my tennis ball on, so I have my tennis ball on my right side, I take, drop my knees to that side. And then from there, I extend my left arm out to the side and I play around with my right arm as far as sometimes I hold it up and let the shoulder sink down, reach the shoulder up. And then sometimes I bring both arms on this side. So it's a spinal twist with a little bit of this pressure on the trigger point. So by bringing the knees off to the side, the same side puts more pressure. So if that's too much pressure, then don't do that. <laughs> by bringing your knees off to the opposite side, it lessens and reduces the pressure. So if you need less pressure, you can bring your knees to the opposite side. Now you can do both sides, or you can just do wherever you have trigger points, that's up to you. Go to the side, use your arm strength, slowly come back up to seated position. So, Take a moment now in your seated position and notice the mobility of your neck, side to side, up and down. Notice the freedom of your breath. And honor the fact that your body knows how to heal. And by bringing your awareness, bringing your loving kindness, and bringing some attention to these areas in a way that allows them to release. Um, it, they respond and they're grateful. And so you can feel that in your body. Hope this was helpful. If you're interested in more videos or you're interested in if you're 